Coming up on today's edition of Locked On Eagles, it's stock up, stock down after the Eagles' eighth straight win on Thursday Night Football against the Houston Texans. Who shined and who struggled? Spoiler alert, yet again, a lot of players shined. We'll get into it coming up on this Monday edition of Locked On Eagles. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We thank you so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day. Welcome in Eagles fans to a Monday edition of the show. Today's episode is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, go up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code Lockdown. That's prizepicks.com. Promo code locked on. I'm Louis DiBiase. You can follow us on Twitter at Lockdown Birds and at DiBiase LOE. And you can find our show Monday through Friday on all podcast platforms on YouTube as well. The Eagles are 8 0 for the first time in franchise history. They remain in their own for the rest of the year. They're going to be the only undefeated team left until they finally lose. When that's going to be, I'm not so sure. This Monday night, they have the Washington Commanders. Taylor Heineke, it's a different looking team with Heineke under center as opposed to Carson Wentz week three when Philadelphia dominated the commanders in D.C., but Washington's four and five. The Eagles are the hottest team in football, and they might keep it rolling to get to nine and oh, I'm going to be at that game so pumped, and I'm trying to a little bit of, I don't know, reverse jinx or I'm a little superstitious, not not huge into you know the superstitions of sports, but the last time I was at a Washington Eagles Monday night football game, it was 2017. They won the Super Bowl that year. So I'm going to try to bring that Lou DiBiase magic to Lincoln Financial Field next Monday. But until then, we have you covered all five days this week on Lockdown Eagles. Today, though, I want to keep looking back at that matchup against the Houston Texans. The Eagles dominated in the second half to run away after it was a little shaky there, though, for a bit. At halftime, it was 14-14, to but the Eagles clearly were the more talented football team, and they eventually get the win. We're going to do stock up, stock down today, and as we always do in segment one, we start with the quarterback. We start with Jalen Hurts, and for the ninth week in a row, his stock is up. Jalen Hurts, not only is his stock up, but after watching Josh Allen this week, after watching Patrick Mahomes, look, they are still better players than... Jalen Hurts. They are the two best quarterbacks in the entire NFL. But right now, through nine weeks of the 2022 NFL season, I think Jalen Hurts is your MVP. He is an elite quarterback leading the only undefeated team in football. To me, he's the most valuable player. And unlike Josh Allen, unlike Patrick Mahomes, he hasn't had any hiccups yet. He's on pace to have more yards than all but three MVPs. Matt Ryan in 2016, I should go back to Peyton Manning in 2013, and then also you have Patrick Mahomes in 2018. Outside of those three players, Jalen Hurts, total yards from scrimmage, he's on pace for 5,034 total yards. That's more than other MVPs that have made a similar impact through the air and on the ground. Lamar Jackson in 2019, Cam Newton in 2015, he has made a bigger impact based on numbers. And he's atop the league in pretty much every category. Explosive plays, turnover differential, completion percentage. He's a top two passer, according to Pro Football Focus. He's the best graded quarterback per PFF, throwing past the sticks. He's a top two passer in passes 25 plus yards downfield. He's atop the league in pocket passing. I think right now, Jalen Hurts, after watching football yesterday and Sunday, yes, is Josh Allen a better football player right now? He is. Is... Patrick Mahomes a better quarterback than Jalen Hurts? He is. But Jalen Hurts through nine weeks of this season is the MVP. And I've been getting some tweets this morning after making that claim and people saying that, you know, he's almost like a system player compared to those other guys because of how good the Eagles roster is and the scheme. And look, I totally agree. Jalen Hurts has one of the best support systems in the entire NFL this year. But to call Jalen Hurts a system player, somebody had the audacity today to to call him a system player and then say, how can you say he's the MVP when Tua Togo Viola 
exists. Like you're going to call Jalen Hurts a game manager pretty much and then use Tua as a counter of who should be MVP. That guy is seeing a historic amount of spacing that the NFL has ever seen with Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle in that Kyle Shanahan-like offense. Jalen Hurts, yes. Does he have an incredible system around him and weapons and the best offensive line and one of the most talented defenses? Absolutely. Does it make his job easier? Absolutely. But if you don't see that Jalen Hurts is elevating this football team to an MVP kind of level, then I don't know what you're talking about. He's in that same category with Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes when it comes to elevation. Winning because of your quarterback, not winning with him. Tua, yes, he's been really good this year. But I think you take away Tyree Kill or Jalen Waddell, you take away this offensive system, he's still, to me, a good, not great player. Jalen Hurts this year, he has been a great player. Honestly, he... He is the system when you think about it. Like everything that this offense does runs through Jalen Hurts. Everything the defense tries to do has to do with stopping Jalen Hurts' dynamic ability through the air and on the ground. Like you think about the run game and how, like the offensive line, of course, opens up incredible lanes for Miles Sanders. His cut ability, you know, he gets his own yards too. He definitely creates for himself. The offensive line creates for this run game, but you can see how huge how wide open these lanes are for running backs because defensive players are terrified that Jalen Hurts is going to keep the football and run it himself. That is him directly impacting the run game. You are winning on the ground because of Jalen Hurts. Yes, are you winning because of other factors as well? Absolutely, but you are winning because of Jalen Hurts. You look at the RPOs. A lot of people say it's easier to throw the football at an efficient rate when you're running RPOs. The thing is, RPOs only work if your quarterback makes defenses pay with his arm and his legs like Jalen Hurts does. Again, defenses are scared of Jalen's dynamic ability. He is affecting the defense within this scheme. The scheme is a scheme because of Jalen Hurts, not vice versa. And by the way, he's not only dominating with his legs this year. It's not just the RPO. It's not just the run game. This isn't 2021. Jalen Hurts, you look at the last what, two games against the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Houston Texans? He's really only beating teams inside the pocket. Like, he's made his money the last two weeks inside the pocket. He's throwing guys open, too. I mean, look at that game against Pittsburgh. Those three touchdowns to A.J. Brown were all atop the league when it comes to improbable completions. Those passes were money. They were right where only A.J. Brown could get it. Does A.J. Brown make it easier? Of course he does. But Jalen Hurts this year, if you don't see that he's elevating this football team to an MVP-like level, I'm not sure what we're talking about. Stock up to Jalen Hurts this week and stock up all season. If you want to throw the you know strength of schedule thing at you too, when it comes to Jalen Hurts, just look at that game against Dallas on Sunday Night Football. That's a top, they are sixth overall this year when it comes to the least amount of yards allowed across the league. They have the best pass rusher in football in Micah Parsons. They have Trayvon Diggs, who, you know, although he gets kind of a bad rap because he's aggressive, I still think is one of the best, not just young corners in the NFL, but he's one of the best cornerbacks in all of football. And Jalen Hurts had one of his most efficient games through the air that night. Jalen Hurts, to me, I think, and you're seeing him now stop the blitz with his arm. You saw that against Houston time after time. I really think Jalen Hurts right now is the MVP of the NFL season. He's on pace again for 5,032 yards from scrimmage and 39 total touchdowns. That's more than nine of the last 12 MVPs. Peyton Manning, Matt Ryan, and Patrick Mahomes in 2019 are the only players that are that had that kind of pace. More than Cam Newton, more than Lamar Jackson, more than the Michael Vicks of the world in 2010. All these dynamic mobile quarterbacks that also push the ball down the field. Jalen is on pace to surpass their numbers. I think he's a top MVP candidate. The stock continues to rise for the Eagles QB1. I continue to eat crow this year, and I'm so happy that I'm doing so. It wasn't just Jalen Hurts, though, that led the Eagles to another win on Thursday Night Football against the Houston Texans. There were a lot of players that stepped up. I want to get into it coming up next right here on Locked on Eagles. It's stock up, stock down, and it's brought to you by Prize Picks Daily Fantasy. Here's how it works with prize picks. You pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money 
on any entry. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. I love doing this for the Eagles this year. Pretty much every player that I banked on outside of Quez Watkins. But if I'm going with Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, Jalen Hurts, Miles Sanders, normally they hit that over on the projection. Again, no competing against other people. It's just you versus that projection. And you can bet on any sport you watch, the NFL, the NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball. I'm going to keep going. Soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, and more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Safe and fast withdrawals as well. Currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, PrizePix will give you $100. If you deposit $50, bucks, PrizePix will give you $50. Bucks. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. We thank PrizePix Daily Fantasy for sponsoring Locked On Eagles today. I'm Louis DiBiase. This is Locked On Eagles, a Monday edition of the show. Thank you so much for making Locked On Eagles your first listen each and every day. Make sure your second listen is the Locked On Sports Today podcast. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insight only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. It's a Monday edition of the podcast, and we are still recapping that big win on Thursday night over the Houston Texans to get the Eagles to 8-0 and on the year, still holding on to that one seed in the NFC. The Minnesota Vikings, though, they did beat Washington, who the Eagles play this Monday night. So they're 7-1. and The Eagles, of course, had that head-to-head tiebreaker, but they got to keep stacking wins. It's crazy that even at 8-0, and they cannot get comfortable. We know this team won't ever do that anyway, even against a team like the Houston Texans, although it felt like they were kind of sleepwalking for a bit. They did not overlook an inferior opponent, and they got the win. Of course, stock up to Jalen Hurts, who I think through nine weeks of the season should win MVP. He also, by the way, didn't mention it in segment one, but he has that whole storyline the NFL loves of that year two starter breakout. He's in his third year in the NFL, but it's his second full year as a starter. They love giving the award to that young player that kind of breaks out, right? They tend to give the award to that player a lot. Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, um, Kyler Murray, if you would have kept going, would have won it. Carson Wentz would have won it in 2017 if he didn't tear his ACL. There's a lot of players that win the award in that category. So stock up to Jalen Hurts, again, for eight games in a row. But let's keep going with stock up because the Eagles had a lot of players step up in that win. And to me, on the offensive side of the football, the second most impactful player outside of Hertz, who was dealing inside the pocket against the Blitz down the field, he was so accurate. Dallas Goddard, though, was the guy on the other end of most of those throws. Dallas Goddard with a season high, eight catches for 100 yards and a touchdown. It was his first 100-yard game on the season. He was close against Arizona, 95 catches on eight, on eight, I should say 95 yards on eight receptions, but this was his like big breakout game. You know, everybody, it feels like in this offense has had their huge game, right? Miles Sanders against Jacksonville, AJ Brown's had two now week one against Detroit and uh, week eight against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, you know, he blew up. Sanders blew up. Devontae Smith had his game, if you will, against the Washington commanders week three, Dallas Goddard, He has been one of the most consistent players on this team all year, almost quietly so, how consistent he's been with 521 yards this year on the season, on pace to surpass 1,000 yards for the first time in his career. He's been good, but he hasn't had that huge, massive performance some of these other players have. He did that against the Houston Texans. Again, 100 yards on eight catches and a touchdown. He's just been again, consistently one of the most underrated offensive skill position players in the entire league. Honestly, he reminds me of Travis Kelsey. Like he is a, I don't even want to say a poor man's Travis Kelsey, but in a way, a poor man's Travis Kelsey with the explosive plays he makes that even when he's not seeing eight catches like he did against Houston, even if he only has three, like he did against Detroit week one, he's still going to get 60 yards. Um, Even if he gets five catches like he did against Jacksonville, he's still going to rip off 14.4 yards per reception for 72 yards on the day. He's been so efficient. And now you saw the volume increase against Houston 
and Goddard made the Texans defense pay. Dallas Goddard has been so good this year. It's crazy too, that he's on pace for almost a thousand yards when he's only seventh in targets this year among tight ends, but he's second in the league at that position in receiving yards. He is to me, one of the most underrated players in football, by the way, only TJ Hawkinson as a starter is averaging more yards per reception with Goddard at 13.3 on the year. I don't think people truly still appreciate, maybe the, I know Eagles fans do, but across the NFL, I don't know if people still truly understand how good Dallas Goddard is. And to go from Zach Ertz to Dallas Goddard, an abundant of riches, if that's the right way to say that phrase, I'm not sure. But <laughs> it's, it's a luxury to go from Zach Ertz, the best tight end in Eagles history, to now Dallas Goddard. Who, who knows, at the end of his career, he might steal that mantle from Ertz. Dallas Goddard blew up against Houston. His stock is absolutely up. And this guy didn't blow up the box score on Thursday against Houston, but stock up to Brandon Graham. Brandon Graham, by the way, was the reason Chauncey Gardner-Johnson had his league-high fifth interception of the year in that game. Brandon Graham pressured Davis Mills, made him step up and force a throw over the middle. CGJ was there to make a great pick, but Brandon Graham consistently was hitting home to Mills on Thursday night. I thought even before that against Pittsburgh, he was consistently getting to Kenny Pickett on the edge. They were using him more inside as a pass-rushing defensive tackle. Brandon Graham has been such an effective fastball off the bench this year. And what I love about BG, and we all know this, but he is such a team first guy. I just think he loves being a Philadelphia Eagle player that he's willing to pretty much put up with whatever. And even though he's in his thirties now and he's coming off a torn Achilles, he doesn't have a lot of leverage in a way to be upset when they bring in Robert Quinn and Hassan Reddick and pretty much, move forward with the future featuring Sweat and Riddick on the edge. And, you know, he's reduced now to a rotational third defensive end. And then you add Robert Quinn, but Brandon Graham just keeps supporting everything the team does. I think there's definitely a little more fire in his belly after they traded for Quinn, because since they traded for Robert Quinn, Brandon Graham's had two of the best games he's had this season. But overall, he's just such a team first guy, and he's willing to embrace whatever role Philly gives him. And he has been so good off the bench this year. I think him and Quinn, especially when Robert Quinn gets going now, these next few weeks, really getting acclimated into this defense, that's going to be a great DE three and four combination the rest of the way. It reminds me a lot of what they did in 2018 with Chris Long and Michael Bennett, where you have two veteran, former star pass rushers that are still really good players, but they're not really top tier pass rushers anymore. They can't handle the workload of being an every down starter but they're still very effective pass rushers when you keep them fresh, right? When you keep them fresh, rotating through with a four-man rotation. Michael Bennett was great in 2018. Chris Long, although they won the Super Bowl with him in 2017, I thought he was a better pass rusher in that 2018 season. And you saw the benefit of those two guys in that rotation. That reminds me of a lot of what we have right now with Brandon Graham and Robert Quinn, two of the best pass rushers of the last decade, two of the most efficient rushers off the edge that now have fresh legs because Hassan Reddick and Josh Sweat are going to be the featured starters. Brandon Graham just continues to really defy the odds and just go along with anything Philadelphia throws at him, right? Chip Kelly asks him to be a 3-4 outside linebacker that drops back in coverage. And somehow, although that was not what he did best at all, somehow that's when Brandon Graham broke out. It wasn't with Andy Reid. It was with Chip Kelly in a defense that really didn't fit him. And now they're asking him to be the veteran backup rotational player. And they keep adding players around him to steal away snaps. And he just keeps putting his head down and keeps making plays. And I was just really impressed with Graham against Houston. And just these last two weeks, I think he is one of the best Eagles of all time. And I don't think anybody should ever wear number 55 again in franchise history. Stock up definitely to Brandon Graham. And then stock up again to Javon Hargrave. I know this is the obvious one. And I left some obvious guys off. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, James Bradbury with another interception on the year. Darius Slay. Houston didn't even bother targeting his side of the field. He's been maybe the MVP of the defense this year. But Javon Hargrave, of all those guys, has really blown up these last two weeks. Three sacks against the Houston Texans. The last defensive tackle to have three sacks for the Eagles in a game was Fletcher Cox back in 2018. I believe that was against the Los Angeles Rams, if I'm not mistaken. Javon Hargrave has been a monster since 
coming off the bye week. Listen to these last two games. According to Pro Football Focus, Javon Hargrave has, of course, five sacks, 12 quarterback pressures, and a 24.5% win percentage, which is really good. And Hargrave, this is huge for him. He's in a contract season. He's looking to get paid. Well, after these last two games, he is now among the top five defensive tackles in pass rush win rate. Hargrave pointed to why he was so quiet the first seven games of the season, I should say six games, as opposed to these last two, was, you know, he was dealing with those injuries that he dealt with throughout training camp. He felt rusty, and that bye week was huge for him to get healthy. You can tell. Javon Hargrave looks like the 2021 version in the first half of the year that was, outside of maybe Aaron Donald, the best pass-rushing defensive tackle in football. I don't know if the Eagles are going to pay him this offseason. I don't know if they can afford him, but regardless, Javon Hargrave is going to get paid, and having that kind of fastball on the inside now, too, with all the depth they have on the edge, if he's going to get to the quarterback like this up the middle, it's going to be very, very difficult to beat the Philadelphia Eagles. So stock up to Jalen Hurts, stock up to Javon Hargrave, Brandon Graham, Dallas Goddard, a complete team win yet again against the Houston Texans on Thursday Night Football. I got one stock down that I'll get into coming up next. There's a player on the defense that I think is definitely been disappointing and we'll see what his future is that's coming up next right here on locked on eagles but first guys a shout out to the official sports book of the locked on podcast network and it's bet online your number one source for betting football and the start of the new basketball season we know the philadelphia philly season sadly ended in the world series but we still got the 76ers they're going to try to make a title run this year hopefully when Embiid and james harden can stay healthy and you got the Philadelphia Flyers to bet on. Of course, the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm red hot right now with our LOE3. 6-0 and in the last two weeks. You can bet on all Philadelphia sports. The NFL, the MLB, the NFL, the NHL, boxing, golf, MMA, everything at betonline.net. They're your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about all the trends in action because Bet Online, it's where the game starts. I'm Louis DiBiase. This is Locked on Eagles, a Monday edition of the show. Stock up, stock down. Lots of stock ups. Again, stock up to Jalen Hurts. Stock up to Dallas Goddard. Stock up to Javon Hargrave. Stock up to um, Brandon Graham. When it comes to stock down, there weren't a lot of guys that struggled against Houston. I thought just overall the tackling yet again was bad. I wasn't happy at times with what Jonathan Gannon was dialing up, considering the circumstances of that matchup. But there weren't a lot of individual players that were just a significant liability. Even the defensive line, like they really struggled without Jordan Davis to stop Damian Pierce, but they also got to Davis Mills all game long. As I said, Javon Hargrave had three sacks. Josh Sweat, to me, was their best run defender. He had a great game. Hassan Riddick makes that huge pass deflection in the fourth quarter in the red zone in the open field against an athletic tight end. The defensive line even, you know, they had their bright spots, but the one guy up front that I thought really struggled, and it was great to see him battling out there, but um, Fletcher Cox, just at times, you still see the flashes of the old Fletcher Cox this year. I thought he was really good to start off the season. One of the more consistent pass rushers. And he's still a very solid player, but he, he's not what he used to be, especially against the run. He was getting moved quite often against Houston's interior offensive line. Again, they missed Jordan Davis very badly. Um, Cox did not do well against the run. And you know, the thing too with his pass rushing, he does have three sacks this year. And again, I thought he's been pretty good at times throughout the year. His effort has been amazing. Uh, just like Brandon Graham, a team first guy that's really been embracing whatever the Eagles ask of him. But, you know, even uh, getting to the quarterback the last month, he has definitely struggled. When it comes to pass rush win rate, as I mentioned, Javon Hargraves among the top five. Fletcher Cox right now, is closer to the bottom of that list. And the issue is he's not seeing the double teams that he used to. And so Fletcher Cox, and that's according to ESPN and next gen stats that those pass rush win rate numbers, uh, Fletcher Cox just very inconsistent now. And honestly, that'll probably be who he is for the rest of his career. Kind of like Brandon Graham. He's not going to be an every down player, but if he's your second or third defensive tackle, you could still do a whole lot worse. Um, you know, heading into the season because of how hot he finished the year, I thought that maybe, and they might still because of price, Javon Hargrave is going to command top dollar as opposed to Fletcher Cox. Maybe you still keep Cox as a rotational piece with Davis, Milton Williams, Marlon Tui Peloto, maybe a draft pick. 
you you could still keep Cox over Hargrave, but I, I don't think it's going to have to do with performance when it comes to them deciding who to keep between Cox or Hargrave, if they even keep either. I think they're going to want to keep at least one. But if they're just trying to keep the better player and they're willing to spend more, Javon Hargrave is the guy to pay. He, he's clearly the better player right now. And uh, Fletcher Cox definitely did struggle. But he battled out there. He even got injured, got back into the football game. You can see the pursuit that he has down the field, getting after running backs. You know, he still does have three sacks this year. He's had bright spots. So was Fletcher Cox completely shot? I don't think so at all, but you know, he's definitely not the one, a one B with Aaron Donald that he used to be. And that's just the nature of the NFL. But I thought against the run against Houston, he definitely did struggle, but overall mostly positives in yet another win for the Eagles. They're eight. No, for the first time in franchise history. Next up, we look forward to the Washington commanders on Monday night football, the Eagles at eight and Washington at four and five. We'll take a look at that matchup this week. We've got our mid season awards tomorrow on the podcast. Still four more shows for you on all podcast platforms, wherever you get locked on Eagles also in video form as well on YouTube. We thank you so much for making locked on Eagles. Your first listen each and every day. Make sure your second listen is the locked on sports today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your shows. As always, thank you for downloading Lockdown Eagles. Thank you for watching and listening, and we'll see you tomorrow. As always, let's go Birds.